Hi guys. Um, I guess we will start with the victory that you guys enjoyed last weekend. Um, it was probably the first time in about eight years that you finally beat uh, New Zealand in South Africa. For some of you, the guys, it was the first time. Just take us through that emotion and what you felt. Was it a different feeling? And also just a sense of how fantastic the crowd was at Mubela. So. Um, yeah, so I'll start. Um, no, first of all, just the, to the second part of the question, just at Mumbela, the, the crowd was, was absolutely fantastic. I think um, the way they sung the national anthem, um, the way they cheered for, for every moment in the game, um, just the atmosphere that was, was uh, for the full 80 minutes of the game which is, was just fantastic. Um, and then on the victory, um, yeah, extremely proud, but in saying that, um, it took a lot of hard work and um, behind the scenes analysis, um, the tough training camps, um, hard lessons we learned in the in the Wales series that that build up to to last week. So, um, so it's a bit of a relief to to get the victory, but we know there's still for for this upcoming weekend there's still a lot of hard work to do, um, and especially in that 80 minutes uh, between the four white lines. Yeah, I think Titsy summed that up quite nicely. Um, I think the atmosphere at the stadium was incredible. Uh, the supporters were incredible. and um, I know it was the first time we won in eight years, but sure we had to work extremely hard on the field for it. I think um, the effort the guys put in throughout the 80 minutes. Um, I think a lot of a lot of us were happy to, to see the final whistle blown at 80 minutes. And it was nice that uh, Billy got to try at the end. But um, yeah, like I said, we, we, had a, we had a good look at ourselves after that Wales series and, um, uh, the, and the hard work paid off last week and we're just looking forward to this weekend again at Ellis Park. Hey, um, Stephen and, and Damon, um, congrats on, on the victory last weekend. I just want to take you back to a different time. Five years ago, there was a, a 57-0 loss in Albany. Um, I think there's eight players involved in this team that were in that match. Um, since that time, you've gone on and won a World Cup and a, a Lions series. Uh, can you just talk me through you know, what's changed in that time? Obviously, the new coach, but um, from your perspective within the team, um, how have you transformed? What's changed um, to get you to where you are now? So, by you if you could. Um, yeah, like you said, obviously, the coaches have changed. Um, and I wouldn't say the, philo uh, the, philo the philosophy changed a lot, but I think um, Rassi and Jacques and Stoker managed to get the buy from all the playing, uh, from the playing squad um, when they came on board. And um, obviously, uh, working a new mentality on defense, uh, even um, when we played England in that uh, June series in 2018, it was the first time that um, us as a group had played together with um, under Rassi and Jacques and, and Stoker. Um, so, yeah, I know a lot changed then, and we, we were 23 points down in that first 20 minutes against England, but um, the way Jacques and Rassi, um, I know Rassi was in the, in the coach's box and Jacques was on the side of the field, but the way he kept on pushing us to go harder and keep making them make decisions on the field. Um, the more he was talking to us on the field, the harder we went and it started to pay off. And obviously, I think that series alone, just beating England, I think they came off quite uh, quite a few wins um, before that. And they were unbeaten for quite a while. And um, I think us as players and as coaches, we took a lot of confidence from that. And then we played Argentina and we won one and lost one and lost two. Um, uh, Australia had a first test away as well, but um, you know, we, like when we played against New Zealand as well, obviously the game started and like New Zealand do sometimes they come out and you look at the scoreboard after the first 15, 20 minutes and you, sometimes you're 21 points behind and I think uh, the first test against New Zealand in 2018 we were 14 points behind and um, like, like Shark did in, in, the, in the English series in June that year, he just um, asked us to go harder and, and make decisions and, and put ourselves under pressure on the field. And luckily um, for us, at the end of the day, we won our first test um, against New Zealand 
um, since 2014, I think, and in New Zealand for a very long time as well. And, and it's, it was incredible last week to see the atmosphere in South Africa. Obviously, we haven't played New Zealand since 2018 um, in South Africa alone. So, um, but just to beat them on nine soil again, I think us as players, we can take a lot of confidence from that. But we also know that um, what they can bring onto the field on Saturday. We also know that I played at Ellis Park. The last time we played in the Ellis Park, they beat us just before the World Cup in 2015. So um, we were really looking forward to the challenge. And, um, and I know that New Zealand will come back a lot stronger than, um, and you know, it's going to be a incredible game on Saturday. Um, Damien, uh, just talking about the Ellis Park, um, is, 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 is there's a lot of talk about the Ellis Park factor. Um, is it a factor, is it a ground you guys particularly like playing at, and what is it like to play there? Yeah, it's, it's nice. I think uh, when, you get to, when you get to train there for the full week, it's obviously very nice. Obviously, when uh, Lions were doing well in Kitsia and myself at the Stormers, and we had to play Lions in there, that's a period back, and we were playing incredible rugby, and we had Super Rugby three times, uh, or three years in a row in the finals. It was quite tough to come play at Ellis Park. And, um, but we know it's a national treasure in South Africa. Us as players, we treasure it. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Um, Kitsia can elaborate more on it. Um, but yeah, I think um, what we experienced last week at um, at Mobella Stadium, I think it's, it's going to be probably very similar. I think a lot louder at Ellis Park this weekend. And um, yeah, it's going, it's going to be a great occasion. And I know, like I said earlier, the All Blacks weren't disappointed in South Africa. Steve, can you answer that question as well about what has changed? Um... Um, yeah, I think uh, personally for me, it's uh, Rassi and, and Jock came in, into the box what group with a, with a plan and um, I think their biggest job was probably to convince everyone to become, uh, to be aligned with the plan and, and play a certain brand of rugby um, that will, will actually get us to win test matches. So I think um, I think it was the buy-in from the squad from from the day that they walked in um, right through to, to now and um, the consistency they had in the in the way they coached, in the way they talked, um, in the way they, they motivated us to, to play a good game of rugby is, is what stood out for me in the um, since probably since that fifty seven <coughs> loss to to where we are today. Um, so yeah, uh, it's probably just the, the alignment and understanding um, how big every every single test match is and um, the way um, each player in the squad actually gets himself up to, to play a good game of rugby. How's it, Stephen? Um, on this side. <laughs> um, Joseph coming in uh, for Bongi now, uh, obviously a big moment for him. Um, third game for the box and first against New Zealand. How do you guys sort of keep his head in the game and uh, keep him grounded for the massive uh, match this weekend? And then secondly, from what you faced last weekend in Mbombele in the scrum battle, what did you think of New Zealand's pack and uh, what kind of battle are you expecting again this weekend there? Um, yeah, so for, for Joseph, um, no, I actually had before him, I think he's, um, he's been involved with us for quite a while and he's been training hard and working hard. Um, he knows the structures in and out. Um, He's saying that also very sad for, for, for Bongi. Um, hope he gets well soon and, and back on the field. Um, but yeah, so when it comes to scrum time and, and the battle we've, we faced against uh, against the ABs, um, yeah, I think they've always been a, a good international uh, outfit, especially when it comes to lineups and, um, and scrummaging. Uh, I remember back in the day when and they had stalwarts like, like Owen Franks and those guys who, who set up, who set the standards for, for international scrummaging um, uh, that we, like, that I looked up as a player, as a, as a young player, and now actually being there and playing the game, I think um, they will always come out and, and be a tough opponent. Um, I think we still, we had a lot of work to do, especially from the second half. Um, we didn't get the dominance we wanted, but um, we put in the hard work this week um, and Oh, it's going to be it's going to be another physical scrum battle um, coming this weekend. Um, uh, Stephen, I'll address this to you just because you've been involved in the South African sort of um, franchise game for the last two years. Um, I was going to say actually that your season started last September, but it didn't actually start in the previous September. You guys are on a sort of like a never-ending season now. You're talking about how hard you have to do to beat the All Blacks. Your Stormers teammates have just come back from an off-season. 
How are you guys bearing up physically and mentally? Because, I mean, it just feels like you're playing like non-stop rugby, and what are you doing to get around that? <laughs> Um, yeah, it does. I think with with how the URC is structured now, going into international seasons, uh, I think for, for me personally, it's just um, taking e each competition on its own. So almost um, like when you finish with your uh, domestic competition, you got the Wales. We had the Wales series coming up, and now we've got the uh, rugby championship. So um, each one is a is, is a milestone or a, um, a challenge on its own. So you almost individualize it and um, and get excited for, for each challenge that, that every different competition brings. So I think that's what keeps me a bit uh, mentally in tune and, and, and uh, keeps the, the, the fire there for, for playing rugby. But um, I mean, just representing South Africa on, on an international stage is just um, it's what gets me up in the morning. Um, to go into the gym at seven o'clock in the morning and do a full day of training. So, uh, Kitsi and Damien, uh, just chatting about the iconic Emirates Airline Park and how much you enjoy playing there. Uh, from a temperature perspective, um, as you know, it's uh, going to be in the region of about 24 degrees on Saturday. Beautiful conditions. How beneficial is it for you with a later kickoff, and how much do you enjoy that kicking off at five past five as opposed to three in the afternoon? Um. <clears throat> No, I don't think it will be that hot at 5 o'clock in the evening, but um, it's going to be quite dry, and that's why I think uh, the All Blacks won't disappoint us on Saturday. Not to say that they disappointed us this past weekend, but um, towards the end of the game in, in, uh, at Mumbela, sorry, it got quite greasy. Um, and I think they got uh, quite tough for them when they had to chase the game, but obviously um, we know how highly skilled and world-class are all blacks are and how they can throw the ball around and on the day when it sticks, it's, um, if I was a supporter, I would, I would love to watch a kind of grind every day. So we know on Saturday we're going to have to stay switched on for probably 85 minutes um, at least. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it no matter if we play them at 2 or 3 o'clock. Um, I think it would still be a great occasion and um, I'm really looking forward to the challenge. Damien, um, this is obviously an All Black team under immense pressure at the moment, lost five of their last six. Does it feel like this All Black group is right for the picking at the moment? Um, I, I don't know. I think, uh, yeah, I think for, for us as Springboks, uh, personally, we just like to focus on our hand game and what we want to achieve um, going forward. Um, and I think that's the most important thing. Um, uh, what the All Blacks are going through, um, I hope for their sake, hopefully after the playoffs, they start getting it right. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, like I said, they, they're a world class outfit, um, they're highly skilled, skilled, and they have a lot of individuals that can break games open, um, or break games wide open uh, very quickly. So um, we know, obviously, we know as players and as, as coaching staff and as a, as a group what the All Blacks are going through. Um, Kitty and myself were there with the Springboks um, in 2016-2017 and it was very tough so um, we've been there um, together and as a Springbok group but um, we also know that we need to focus on our own jobs and what we want to achieve as a team going forward so um, we will probably just stick to that process um, and yeah, um, like I said, we're really looking forward to the challenge. Uh, Damien, hi, good afternoon. Um, and good afternoon, Stephen, as well. <laughs> uh, Damien, you guys uh, dominated the midfield at uh, Mbombela. Just uh, talk us through the key aspects of that battle. And if the All Blacks do choose Caleb Clark uh, for this Saturday, how does that change the dynamic uh, if, if he's chosen at centre? I mean. um, yeah, I think it'll be quite similar. Um, yeah, I can't. I think they might change a few things around if they wanted to do attack wise, but there's not much you can do in a week. Um, I think before even coming in, they probably had a plan of what they wanted to achieve, and I know sometimes things don't go according to plan, but um, to change a lot in a few days, it's, it's going to be quite tough. And I know you might try for the first 20 minutes, but I think um, speaking as a player, when you get tired, you, you get into the habit of what you 
of what you do when you're tired and, and what you're trained to initially do and when you first started the test match so, or before you even got to South Africa. Um, but yeah, uh, no matter what team they put out, like I said, and I'll keep repeating it because I think they are a world-class team, um, I think they still have a lot to offer. Um, uh, we will always stay mentally switched on 100% um, on the field for what they can throw at us. We never know what they're going to throw at us, and that's what I mean. They're highly cross skilled individuals that can just break the game open quite quickly. So we need to stay switched on. Uh, and then they, no matter who they pick in the midfield, um, uh, myself and the family was ready for it. Right, and, and just what were the key the keys to actually winning that battle in the first game? Um, well, I think we played in the right areas, um, and obviously I think we we we, we are the pressure on them quite a bit um, in the first half, um, and try to get them to play out of their half quite a bit, and um, I think we achieved that. Um, but we also know that when it comes to our defence, um, we know there's a big work rate on it and, and um, like everybody knows, we try to make it uh, very physical around the defensive area. Um, uh, and yeah, I just felt that um, we handled um, our plan, or we imposed our game plan um, quite good on them for the first 30 minutes on Saturday and then you could slowly start feeling that they were starting to get uh, more involved in the game and like I said, we had to stay switched on um, for 100% of the time. I think uh, there were times maybe we were switched off and uh, we could have gone either way with the 50 50 some of the calls maybe as well, but um, yeah. Uh, Damien, uh, with the 6 2 split on the side again, <laughs> um, with the 6 2 split, a lot of you backline guys have been having for 80 minute shifts constantly over the you know, season so far. And um, how tricky has it been also with the early injuries, you know, in the third test against Wales with Cheslin going off and then Faf last week, um, having to know that you guys are going to have to pull a full shift without a, any sort of backup coming on for you? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. I think sometimes it does, it can, can get you off guard. Um, but we know as a backline, if we go 60 split, we put it in our minds already in the week that we um, are probably going to play 80 minutes. Um, even before we know, before we see someone get injured. Um, and that's just unfortunate what happened to Cheslin. And I know he's recovering well, and I know what happened to Fab is also was very scared on the field at the time as well. But we also know he's recovering well. So um, these things do happen in rugby. It is a collision sport. Um, sometimes you can go five, three splits or three black, uh, backs on the bench, and um, you might get a couple of head knocks, and you might lose four back on players. And, um, we know um, Kwaka has played sevens before, so I think if, if it pushed did come to shove, um, I think Kwaka might have to cover for us sometimes on the wing. But um, yeah, I think for for us, just going into the game, you know, we're going to 60 split, we try and put it in the area really that we're going to go to the, the full 80 anyway. Uh, guys, we've got another two players lined up over here. Is there any Afrikaans questions for Steven? 